This is the second notes video for the unit five about cellular respiration and photosynthesis. Today's notes are about the Krebs cycle and electron transport. So we talked about glycolysis on the last time, which takes the uh, glucose molecule and splits it in half, releasing a little bit of energy and producing two pyruvate molecules. So the pyruvate molecules go, at, when there's oxygen present, go through the next stage, which is uh, the Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid cycle. This is an anaerobic process because oxygen is required for the completion of the entire project. So the two pyruvates go through a couple of changes and join with another molecule called coenzyme A to produce acetyl-CoA, which then combines with another molecule in the matrix of the mitochondrion to produce citric acid. Citric acid goes through a number of changes, a series of changes in the uh, citric acid cycle, producing carbon dioxide, some ATP for cell work, and some NAD and FADH2, which then go to the electron transport chain to produce ATP for the cell. So here's how the process goes. Okay, you have acetyl-CoA, which is formed from uh, two uh, carbon part of the um, pyruvate after one carbon dioxide has been stripped off. This joins with the coenzyme A to make acetyl-CoA, which goes through a series of changes in the citric acid cycle. Along the way, each molecule of pyruvate produces first one molecule of carbon dioxide up here, two more carbon dioxides through the cycle, three NADHs, one ATP, and two FADH2s. So for each molecule of glucose, which produces two pyruvates, we have a total of six molecules of carbon dioxide, six molecules of NADH, two ATPs, and two FADH2s. In your foldable, this is the part that you need to complete for your foldable. Where this happens, it occurs in the matrix of the mitochondrion. That's where the enzymes are that catalyze the reactions in this process. It is an aerobic process, meaning that it requires oxygen. The pyruvates uh, are changed, releasing some carbon dioxide in, in, and adding two uh, coenzyme A's to produce acetyl coenzyme A which then joins with another molecule present in the matrix to produce citric acid. The citric acid goes through a series of reactions where molecules are changed around and some carbon dioxide is produced, some electrons are, and protons are passed to electron carriers, NADH and FADH2, a little bit of ATP is produced and it comes back to the starting compound. The energy that's produced through the citric acid cycle is two molecules of ATP. Again, a little bit of ATP for the cell to use for its needs. And in terms of electron carriers, we have six NADH and two FADH2s, which will go with the ones produced over here to the electron transport chain to produce more ATP. That will occur in the electron transport. Okay, in the electron transport chain, there, there are a series of electrons, that, that series of proteins in the membrane that the electrons are passed through. NADH is going to transfer electrons to one carrier after the other. These carriers are proton pumps that will pump the hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space where they'll then flow through the molecule of ATP synthase to produce ATP. Along the way, the hydrogen ions combine with the, with the electrons after their energy has been used up and half of an oxygen molecule to produce water. So in the electron transport chain, this occurs along the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. Again, this is the membrane that's folded to make lots more surface area for all these proteins to be located. There are three proton pumps, a total of five proteins that the electrons are passed through, plus the ATP synthase molecule. The intermembrane space is located here in between the inner membrane and the outer membrane. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane. Remember, it is a phospholipid bilayer with embedded proteins. And the proteins that are embedded here are the electron carriers. And this part is the mitochondrial matrix where the Krebs cycle occurs. This part of the process here is called the electron transport chain because the high energy electrons are passed from one to another of these proteins, eventually transferring all their energy to these proteins to pump hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. And eventually they join with two, two hydrogen ions and half an, an oxygen molecule to produce water. Oxygen is the final electron acceptor here. That's the electron transport chain. The chemiosmosis part occurs when all these hydrogen ions that build up 
in the intermembrane space kind of act like water across a dam and flow back into the matrix through the ATP synthase, kind of like water passing through a turbine, turning the turbine to make electricity at a dam. This molecule actually does rotate around, and in the process of rotating, it adds a phosphate to ADP to produce ATP. This process is called chemiosmosis. The osmosis refers to the, the hydrogen ions passing through the, through the uh, membrane by means of the ATP synthase. This is facilitated diffusion, whereas this process here is active transport. The entire process is called oxidative phosphorylation, which involves electron transport and chemiosmosis. So in your foldable, where does this happen? This happens, notice that we're taking the NADH and the FADH2 from here, and we're carrying it here to the electron transport chain in the inner membrane. The electrons plus their protons are transferred across down from one protein to the next, pumping hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. Eventually, the hydrogen ions will pass through the ATP synthase molecule to produce where the, where the water is produced and also the 32 ATPs of energy. So we have 36 ATPs total, two from glycolysis, two from the Krebs cycle, and 32 from ATP synthase in the oxidative phosphorylation in the electron transport chain. The final electron acceptor through this whole process is the oxygen of water. And this is where the water comes from that is a byproduct or a product or, uh, of, the, of cellular respiration. So to sum up, the entire process, okay, glycolysis takes one glucose and splits it into two pyruvate molecules. The Krebs cycle takes the pyruvate strips off some electrons that it sends to the electron transport chain and produces the carbon dioxide that is one of the products of cellular respiration. The electron transport chain takes those electrons to produce about 36 ATPs of cell energy altogether and with oxygen produces the water that is the product of cellular respiration. Um, in earlier notes, I said 36 to 38 ATPs. There are slightly different processes that, that occur depending on what particular sugar you're using, whether it's glucose or one of the other isomers of, of that, of C6H1206. Sometimes it produces a little bit more in some cells. So 36 to 38 is generally accepted as the amount of ATP that's produced from one molecule of glucose. That concludes the notes on cellular respiration. Make sure that you have... Um, completed your notes, make sure that you have completed your foldable on cellular respiration, and the next part of the notes will be about photosynthesis.